incredible opportunities that we were previously either unaware of or did not think that they would be a reality as early as this year. The three to four sectors that have certainly taken a change for the better are life sciences, engineering, technology, and digital marketing and analytics. We've already seen from the webinars that we've had with um, you know, um, the state of Michigan, Dan Lawman, on how cybersecurity is becoming a massive opportunity. We've had um, you know, data analytics and digital marketing being covered by Matt Roberts when he spoke to us from Formula One. We also saw how life sciences is um, really transforming the opportunities that traditionally we always thought were available to uh, the medical professionals. And therefore, in the career fair today and tomorrow, we will discuss with, uh, you know, what these opportunities are, what are the, uh, the uh, changes that are happening, and how can we take advantage of them. We'll also be able to discover how Singapore could be a really interesting destination for furthering our education. Now, traditionally, we've seen that, uh, you know, um, a lot of us uh, in here in Dubai look at uh, either the UK or the Europe or even Canada for that matter, when actually Singapore turned out to be a pretty safe haven in the times of COVID at the, in the juncture of uh, the pandemic. And a lot of students are now uh, closely, uh, you know, looking at opportunities that Singapore provides. So this is a, a series of webinars that we are doing with the PSB academy that have got links with a lot of universities um in the UK, in Australia, and uh, Vaishnavi, um, who is uh, there uh, uh, today in this webinar as well. Um, Vaishnavi uh, Nagapandian is uh, part of the PSB Academy Career Counseling, and she'll be available at hand for you to be able to ask a lot of questions and keep it as interactive as we can. So without further ado, I'm now gonna welcome Dr. Charles Ong, who's the head of uh, School of Life and Physical Sciences in the PSB Academy Singapore who will discuss what the life sciences and physical sciences opportunities are and how you can make use of them. So welcome, uh, Dr. Ong. Thank you very much, Ayusha. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Charles Ong. As uh, mentioned, I'm the head of school of PSB Academy. Can I just double check that uh, you can see, see my screen? Yes, all's well, Dr. Ong. OK, excellent. Right. So. Uh, for my talk today, I'm going to look into, I'm going to talk about the careers that, uh, you know, uh, students, um, graduates from the life science uh, programs uh, in, in this education sector can, can venture into. And one of the focus I'm going to be um, gearing towards will be in the pharmaceutical industry. Now, the reason why I'm doing so is because that it is one of the key pillar of our economy in Singapore. And, and it is one of the sector that is really growing. And, and the COVID um, situation around the world has really put a lot of attention into life sciences, as mentioned earlier. And this, is, this, um, this sector is, is really getting a lot of attention at this moment. So let me just share with you what's happening and why Singapore has become one of the uh, pharmaceutical hub um, that uh, most, most pharmaceutical company wants to set up their headquarters in, as well as their manufacturing facilities. So we are the choice location for companies to develop and produce products to meet basically Asia's healthcare need. A lot of the drugs that we produce are distributed throughout the region here. And that puts us as a leading commercial hub. So in terms of sales of, of medications and so on, um, Really, Singapore is one of the key country that country uh, th that the companies come to uh, to set up their their headquarters. Now, in Singapore, we have world class manufacturing capabilities. We have a, an entire sector that has been set up for manufacturing plants, and you will see industry leaders like Pfizer, Novartis, the Advir, GSK, and so on having their manufacturing plants here in Singapore. In fact, eight of the 10 largest manufacturing companies are based here with their manufacturing plants, right? And on, on top of that, because the, the companies are here, they're setting up their headquarters, they also start to bring in their research. And we, ha we have grown this uh, extensive and integrated research ecosystem here in Singapore since the early 2000s. 
and and it has been growing ever since. And right now, if if you have heard of it, if you're not, you can Google it. There's this this um this place called the Biopolis, where most of the life science company are situated. All right. Now we talk about the rise in the pharmaceutical sector. How fast are we rising? Now since two thousand. The pharmaceutical manufacturing output has increased by three times that much, um, and until recently, we have employed more than six thousand people in the in the workforce in this sector. And as I mentioned earlier, eight of the top ten pharmaceutical companies have set up their facilities here in Singapore and manufacturing four of the top ten drugs uh, globally. All right. Now, just to give you a a picture about the growth itself. Um, in, in 2019, which is quite recent, pharma company um, GSK recently opened a 130 million manufacturing facility in Singapore, right? And we're talking a lot of investment here in terms of manufacturing output. And then on the right side, you may be familiar with this, uh, our research institution called ASTAR. That's the agent, Agency for Singapore, uh, Science, Technology and Research. And it is a huge research institution here in Singapore. And for them, we have a drug innovation ecosystem and their, their, their roadmap here, as you can see, um, they have a very vast um, ecosystem in terms of the research and the focus itself because the, the research into drugs is so varied, right? Right from the discovery into translation of, of the uh, research and then into commercialization. Now, it is a huge, huge, um, ecosystem here and there's, a, there's so much research that can be done um, but in Singapore here we focus mainly in terms of translation of research discoveries into real life application so that is the focus we are doing here and what ASTAR is doing here in Singapore okay so if you have the opportunity you know to come to study in Singapore and to work in Singapore uh, in the life science field this could possibly be one of the key areas you could be working in Right now, how how is the sector growing? We talk about the annual rates um, in terms of real GDP growth itself. Now, within the region here in, in Asia, we're talking about emerging markets like China, India, and Indonesia. They are projecting at least uh, between five to eight percent growth on a yearly basis. And for developed markets like Singapore and Korea, for example. We are looking at a very, very healthy 3% growth year on year. So this sector has, has, that, has that potential to grow. Uh, and in fact, with the pandemic, this, um, if you can see this projection was done, done in about, uh, about one, two years ago. And, and it would have changed by now because of the COVID, right? That, that growth would have uh, accelerated even more. So when we look at where why why this why this continuous growth is happening within within Sorry. this uh, region itself right the main reason we can see is the growing population right we talk about the asian asian population here is growing year on year we're looking at also increasing life expectancy um you may or may not be aware that singapore actually is, is one of the uh, country with the highest life expectancy with with average life expectancy of over 80 years of age so um and and it's been growing in year on year again um and and we're also talking about you know the need for medication because of lifestyle and dietary changes because as as, as the countries get more affluent right we're getting more diseases such as diabetes coming in, right? People wanting more uh, to, to, to have better nutrition and so on. And, and as a result, the need for all this pharmaceutical spending, pharmaceutical spending increases every year. And you can see that the, the increase is, is, is between, I mean, um, is, is, is as high as, as about 10% overall, okay? So, now, this question was being asked to pharmaceutical companies, right? What are the kind of uh, growth strategy they are looking into uh, in, in the next five years to come? And when we look at the top three reasons, the first one is to expand into new products, therapeutic categories, or markets. So 
they're, they're looking to, to actually bring in new products into Singapore to develop new products and to, to, to manufacture them. The second one is to look into an, uh, an increased focus in generic medication. And here, generic medications, we're talking about, you know, your, your paracetamols, your, and, and, and your, your common, common off-the-table off the drugs that you can find, right? They are still looking to, to, to increase uh, manufacturing and, and, and sales in this area. And the third um, growth area that we are looking into is the research. And they talk about in-country research here, increase in in-country research to speed up approval process. Now, this is very critical. If you look at COVID alone, right? When, when, the, when we develop the vaccine for COVID, um, once you get the vaccine developed, you still need to go to trial, uh, clinical trials. And after the clinical trials, you still need to um, get the data to the country and get, it, uh, get all the documentation approved before the drug can be administrated and used in the country. So the process itself can be very, very lengthy. All right. Um, but if you are able to conduct the research in the country that you're going to be uh, going to be administrating the drugs, going to be selling the drugs, and, and, and if the research is carried out there, you can actually speed up the entire approval process because the, 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 uh, the monitoring of, of the documentations and the research you know, is being carried out within the country itself as well. So, um, so instead of you know, having research conducted only in their home country, for example, like uh, Germany and, 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 and the US, for example, you know, companies are now increasingly looking to expand their research out into, into various different countries um, within the region so that they can speed up this approval process. And certainly, you know, Singapore is one of these key places where research is being done uh, for pharmaceutical drugs, okay? Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we are the Asian pharmaceutical hub here in Singapore. And how big are we? Now, if you talk about the number of multinational companies with original headquarters in Singapore, we are actually 1.5 times larger in figures as compared to Hong Kong, Shanghai, Beijing, and Tokyo combined. And that's how large we are as a pharmaceutical hub here. All right. Um, and, and, and as I mentioned, you know, if, if, if any of you are interested to work in, in the life science field and in this sector of pharmaceutical industry, you know, you're more than welcome um, to come and explore possible career opportunities here over in Singapore. Okay. Um, our government is also heavily investing in research. And for the research in health and biomedical sciences, you can see out of the $19, million, uh, $19 billion that Singapore government has, has put in as funding for research, $4 billion, and that is 21%, almost a, almost a fifth or if not a quarter of the amount of research money has gone into health and biomedical sciences. And that is the kind of focus the government is giving to this sector. Okay. So a question was also posed to the, to the pharmaceutical company. What are the top challenges they face um, in trying to develop and deliver their pharmaceutical products um, here in Singapore? And the four challenges that they have highlighted, one is the changes and uncertainty of regulatory environment. Now, as I mentioned, if you want to sell a drug, if you want to, uh, uh, to a company and you want to administer a drug in a certain, uh, sorry, in a certain country, um, you are going to need to get your uh, drug approved by, that, or the, by, in, uh, by the regulations uh, within that country. And, and to do so, um, you, know, you, need to, you need to know what's going on over there in the country and you need to understand the regulation there. So in, in, in that sense, you know, people who are in charge and, and, and taking charge of this uh, regulations and, and doing the approval. They have to be people from the life science field, people who understand the pharmaceutical production process and understanding the dangers of the drugs and, and the benefits of the drugs and so on. And, and as such, you know, we are also looking at, at you know, possible careers for life science, science uh, uh, graduates in a field of regulations of drugs. Okay, um, the top challenge, another challenge that, that companies face are access to talent. 
Now, even though we are churning out a lot of life science graduates here in Singapore, companies are still not finding enough talents here. All right, and and I'm I'm not quite certain about your country. I'm not sure how how um, how uh, difficult it is to access talents in your country. But definitely here in Singapore, you know, we need people um, with that background to be able to um, ramp up the development and the delivery of this pharmaceutical products. Okay, the another point is about the bureaucracy within the country. All right. Um, Concerns is that uh, if they want to administer, uh, if they want to develop any drugs, one of the concerns they may have is that uh, you know countries may, may may be very bureaucratical and and as such you know um, delay the 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 approval of drug processes. So this again, um, you know, our, our graduates can also look into working in 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 the government sector in 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 the sense for this uh, uh, for this uh, processes of approval. Now, lastly, is the leveraging of new technology. Now, pharmaceutical tech, uh, pro some pharmaceutical companies surprisingly are quite um, conservative when it comes to new technologies. Now, one of the key reasons, again, is about the approval processes that they go through. If you are to employ a new, a new technology in the development of your drugs, then that technology needs to go through the layers of approval before that drug can be uh, approved uh, through the production of this new technological processes. So as, as a result, a lot of the companies prefer to rely on old technologies where approval has already been given, and, and then they can, they, can, they, are, they can be ensured that whatever they do will be, will be um, accepted by the country. So this is an area, again, in terms of career where, where, where we need new talents to come in and drive the new technology because uh, you know a lot of the drugs can be a lot more effectively produced all right with with new technology okay so um now pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing industry is just one of the sector that life science students can work can look forward to working in there are a lot more places that you know, employ life science students. But I thought that this sector, as I mentioned, because Singapore, uh, for Singapore is a key economy, I, I thought that it is good for me to share the kind of work that's, um, that, that you can look forward to if you work in this sector. So I have a video here that was produced by Workforce Singapore and, and it is linked basically to, to YouTube. I hope you can, you can see this video. If you can't, please give me a shout. Um, so we cannot hear the video if there is any. Oh yeah, that it, um you can't hear, is it? Yeah. Um, hang on. I have to apologize. I'm not too uh, familiar with the uh, Google platform for for um for screening this. Let me just try again. Are you able to hear? Yes, no. Nope. Not a doctor, Charles. We are, not, we not are able to see the video, but not okay. Yeah. Not able to hear it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid I, I can't find any function here to activate this sound. Um, any of you may be familiar with this? Dr. Charles, if you send the link to me, I'll just play it off my um, system here. Okay. Um, let me see if I can grab the link. Sorry, Dr. Charles, there is an option for copy link at the top of the video when you try to play it. Yep. Excuse me. I sent it can to the chat. Yes, chat is fine. Okay. Um... 
Sí. Singapore, a, a vibrant, vibrant city, city in Asia's, Asia's fastest, fastest growing biocluster. Bio the key home base to more than 25 of the world's leading biomedical science, science companies. A place, a place where, where dreams are incubated and brought to life. life. As, As Singapore's, Singapore's economy grows, grows so has the biopharmaceutical industry. industry. It is now a dynamic platform for many men and women to build their careers on. I have, I have always, always been, been curious, curious about, about seeing things, things under, under the magnifying glass. glass. It, it reveals, reveals the unseen wonders around us. us. I, I discover, discover new frontiers of life in order, order to understand our world better. To, to me, being, being part, part of a job, job that can save lives is always the end goal. goal. I, get I get to grow, grow my career as, as I move towards this goal, goal as well. well. I know, I know that, that my work, work will make a difference in the world around us. I support manufacturing, manufacturing utilities and facilities operations. Operation. I get, get the opportunity, opportunity to be, to be exposed, exposed to various projects, projects and, and to a variety, variety of automation systems. systems. This, this keeps, keeps my job fresh, fresh challenging, challenging and, and ever-changing. The professional, the professional conversion, conversion program eased me into the biopharmaceutical industry, allowing, allowing me to face challenges with greater, greater confidence. It's also, it's also rewarding to be able, able to help mentor, mentor others. others. After, After all, we want, we want to achieve, achieve the same goal, to save, to save and improve lives, lives of those around, around us. us. I get, I get to, look to look for, for the final details, details that matter. matter. Driving, driving me to look closer, closer at the world, world around, around us. Quality, quality accuracy, accuracy, and consistency in manufacturing should, should never, never be compromised. Be compromised. I'm, I'm thankful that I can develop, develop my technical skills further as I progress in my career. The industry, the industry is dynamic, dynamic. Learning, learning never, never stops. stops. It's, it's comforting to know that, that my work will go, go on, on to have an impact, impact in the in real, real world. world. It begins, it begins with, with the dream, dream to make, make the world a better place. place. That, that leads, leads to an idea, idea that unlocks possibilities. There will, there will be, be challenges, but they drive, drive us, motivate, motivate us, and inspire, and inspire us to be, to be better, better people. people. And, and when, when we create possibilities, we make, make a difference, difference in the, in the world, world around us, us. And, and find, find our, our purpose. purpose. If you, if you would like to find out more about, about a career, career in the biopharmaceutical industry, visit, visit our Dr. Wong, over to you. Thank you very much for sharing this, the, the video. I apologize, I, I'm not too familiar with this uh, platform for, for presenting. Um, we, we use Teams and, and Zoom, and uh, this is the first time I'm using Google. No right. worries. Uh, are you able to see the screen here? Yes. Okay, great. So um, I've shared with you about the career of, um, you know, careers in the pharmaceutical industry, and that's definitely one of the key areas where, where life science uh, graduates can work in. But there are actually a lot more areas which life science students can progress into and, and work in. And, and that includes, you know, not just dealing with human beings, but also with plants as well as animals. So we are looking at the field of biotechnology. We're looking at a few of medical technology, pharmaceutics, um, nutraceuticals, cosmetics as well, food processing, environmental, um, and, and, and agriculture, and, and so much more, right? Um, so so the need for life scientists really is, is very, very, um, um, uh, how should I put it? Um, it, it, it the, the, the areas they can work in and, and, and the areas that need them is really very vast, okay? Now, 
one of the area in uh, um, that that a lot of my students actually venture into is is the um, is to become medical technologists to work in environments like hospitals and testing facilities. So one of the entry entry requirement to such a, a profession is actually the Bachelor of Science, and and this uh, uh, graduates from this field work directly with clinicians and and allied health professionals um, to analyze samples from patients that are sent to them. And so, you know, we train our students um, and, and life, our life science students in, in a variety of analytical machineries um, to carry out all this diagnosis. Another area that uh, our students also work in is in laboratory support roles. So we're talking about places like um, hospital sample test testing. We're talking about laboratory central facilities that handles animals does microscopy work. We're talking about quality control facilities in, in many uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing companies and government facilities that deals with our food safety, water safety, and so on. So again, you know, there are many areas that, that requires our life science students, uh, our graduates. And for students who do not want, or graduates who do not want to just focus on, on the hardcore technical skills, you know, um, there are many careers outside the labs as well. Now we're talking about careers in uh, like consumer engagement, advertising, public relations, um, licensing of the, the, the medical drugs, for example, and outreach to medical uh, professionals. If you want to sell a drug to, to, to a hospital, to medical professionals, you've got to know the science behind all that. And so, you know, life science uh, graduates are employed also in terms of engaging the consumer uh, in terms of the sales. And in fact, you know, this is one of the more lucrative um, areas if you're talking about purely uh, in terms of income uh, um, in, in a job, okay? Right, so, and, and on top of having that strong background in science, there's also a very strong need for communication skills and their willingness to work with others. And this is another area that that we look into when we when we train our students, right? To to make sure that they're able to communicate well and they're able to communicate very logically to uh, the potential clients. Now, what are the other areas of careers you, um, that 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 life science graduates can look uh, to to go into? We're talking about clinical administrator, you know, scientific advisors and outreach people. Um, you can be doing consultancy work as well. Uh, or, or pharmaceutical science rep and so on and so forth. It is so wide, okay? So I thought uh, um, to close this, I know I've only half an hour, I think I've taken a bit too much time. Um, I thought I'd just talk about the life science programs that we here at PSB Academy offers. So for life science, we offer a foundation diploma program for students who come in from, from the secondary level. Uh, they can enter our foundation diploma program and then move on to, to go into the degree program. And we partner the Troop University to offer four different degree programs in life science. And that is bachelors of biomedical science, bachelors of science in three different specializations. And these are double majors. You're talking about molecular biology and biotechnology, molecular biology and applied chemistry, molecular biology and pharmaceutical science. So it is a very wide basket of, of um, programs that you can choose from. So I thought I'd also share a bit about the university that we partner, and that is La Troupe. And La Troupe started teaching in 1967. They currently have 1,400 full-time lecturers and 38,000 students all over the world. And out of that 38,000, uh, there's a large uh, international student population as well. Now, in, in Australia, they have seven campuses. That's how large they are. And they are ranked the top university, top 1% university worldwide. Okay, so why choose La Trobe? Um, well, they are the top 1%, as I mentioned. They, their curriculum really prepares the students um, to, to be ready to go into the industry uh, directly. A lot of the curriculum we, we, we work with them on are in consultation with the industry when they formulate the curriculum, right? They are excellent in terms of groundbreaking research and in particular cancer research. And they have been, I mean, in terms of standard, basically they are 
are well above the our world average. Okay, so just to share some of the key research that uh, their their researchers look into the area of cancer, malaria, immunology, and so on. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, just to touch very quickly on the on the programs that they offer again. So the bachelors of bio and medical sciences. These are for students who are keen to understand about the human body, its structure, the function in terms of health and diseases. You learn about how diseases manifest the body and then how the drugs work to tackle it. So if you are interested in dealing with you know human health, then this is the area that you. This is the kind of degree that you will want to study in. Now we also have um, the Bachelor's of Science in Molecular Biology and Biotechnology. Now the Bachelor's of Science programs are very similar in nature. They just have a specialization so students can, can focus on certain areas that they're interested in. But frankly, the three uh, programs lead you almost to the same job pro uh, prospects. Okay, so biotechnology looks into the technology aspect of of life sciences and how you harness that technology, all right, to carry out the necessary work. Pharmaceutical science, as it mentions here, um, deals with the drugs itself, and it looks specifically and focus on design and development of drugs. And lastly, we have applied chemistry. And, and a lot of what we talk about life sciences, the basic building block is from basically the chemistry of it, of it all. And here um, we drill into the understanding of the, um, the, at the molecular level, what is happening, all right? So that is the focus for this particular Bachelor's of Science program, okay? So I just list down here uh, uh, again, just to repeat the kind of career prospect you, are, you, can, you can look uh, forward to if you work in life sciences. Um, and this is definitely not exhaustive. This is just some of the samplers of where you could go into. All right. Okay. So there are also questions from us, uh, from, from our potential students and our current student, in fact, about what they can do after that, after they get their bachelor's. And, and well, you can progress on to do an honors either in La Trobe University or a master's level. And then thereafter, you can go on to a PhD. Now, in fact, we are at uh, PSB Academy also looking to offer a master's of biotechnology and bioinformatics in partnership with La Trobe University. And we are going to launch this program in, in September this year. So, you know, if you're worried about career uh, in terms of further studies, you know, we have all the way up to a master's level. And after that, you can look to do a PhD, you know, with La Trobe University in their home campus if you want to. All right. So with that, um, I end my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. You know, if you have any question, do feel free to reach out to me. Thank you, Dr. Charles. That was very um, interesting. It was really interesting to see how uh, the world of um, life sciences is changing. I do have one question um, that based on uh, the bachelors of sciences courses that you have, does that give you um, the ability to be a feeder program into the medical schools of US? All right, um, so if you talk about medical school, um, there is a need to take either the MCAT or the Gen Set, if you're, depending on which country you're looking to progress into. Definitely the, biomed uh, the Bachelor's of Biomedical Science is, is one of the possible uh, pathway into a medical field. Um, but I do have to caution students that it is very, very uh, challenging um, and you have to do very well in terms of your, edu uh, in terms of your results. And, and I encourage students to build up their portfolio, um, you know, in, in, when you're studying, you know, you don't wait until you're about to reapply, then you start working on your portfolio because when you go for your medical interview, you know, it is very important that you, you show, you know, why you deserve to be in the medical, um, in, in med school, basically. You need, to, you need to be able to articulate your, your, um, your passion in, 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 in this area, you know, so, so we, we, we here in, in PSB Academy, we are also trying to engage uh, our medical doctors here in Singapore to give our students some uh, talks and, and advice in how to progress onto the medical school, right? How to build a portfolio. 
Okay, I hope I answer, answer your question. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Charles. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Sanel, I see you have a question. Sanel, do you want to just unmute yourself and ask Dr. Charles? Please, uh, Dr. Charles, I have a question. This is yeah. for my daughter. She is interested in pharmaceutical, uh, but uh, currently she does not have biology as a subject. She has got physics, chemistry, maths. Right. Now, biology is required to, for entry for this. Uh, can I just check what, which level your, your daughter is in right now? What year group uh, is your daughter in? 12th grade. 12th grade. grade. First grade. That would be equivalent to our, um, is that secondary level or? or, yes, or that's secondary level, Dr. Charles. So that would right. be the final year before they graduate. Uh, okay. Sorry, Dr. Charles, that's equivalent yep. to our GCA level. A level. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's fine. So, so the entry level then would be uh, directly into La Troupe University if, if it's at the A level. Um, if um, Now, we do not require students to have that background in, in, in biology to be able to go into the program. Um, and in fact, I think chemistry, if not, is more important uh, in, in terms of a subject that uh, you, your, your daughter should have uh, as compared to biology. Um, we, we teach basically, we will build the foundation back up all the way from year one, right? So not to worry about that. We, we have students coming in from various backgrounds, some with bio, some without bio, some with chemistry, some without chemistry. So we basically have that first year to build that foundation up, right? Um, of oh. course, yeah, just to, just to highlight that, of course, compared to someone who has that bio background, you know, um, Students without bio background will need to put in that additional effort to make sure that you know they, they can catch up with the group. But after year one foundation, everyone should be on par. Oh, nice. Thank you so much, Dr. Charles. That's a very good, useful information. Here. Right. You're most welcome. Does anyone have any other questions before we move on? All right, then. Thank you very much, Dr. Charles. We're going to move on now with the next presentation, which is from um, Ankit Saurabh, who's the assistant lecturer at the School of Engineering and Technology at PSB Academy. And Ankit's going to be taking us through um, the introduction to technology and what life holds for us if we enter into that sphere. So welcome onto the panel, uh, Mr. Ankit. Uh, hi, Ayusha. Thank you for the introduction. Can I, can I share my screen? Sure, please go ahead. Okay. Uh... On the bottom right-hand corner, there are three buttons. So if you press oh, yeah, those, I saw it, I saw it, yes. it now. Uh, yeah. No problem, yeah. I see a lot of students here, so it should be interesting. Let's see. Are you able to see my screen, my uh, presentation? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, uh, so let's start. Today I'll be talking about cybersecurity, some essentials, uh, what is happening around, how is cybersecurity uh, around the world, what is happening. So uh, let's let's start. Basically, I'll be uh, looking at hacking myths busted. Anyway, Ayusha, how, how much time do I have? Just to check. You have 30 minutes, Ankit, don't worry. Oh, okay, 30 minutes. Okay, that should be fine with me. Okay, hacking myths busted. Okay, so uh, just uh, a short introduction about me, uh, Ankit Saurabh, that is my name. Uh, I'm the program leader here at PSB Academy for uh, Bachelor of Cybersecurity and Masters of Cybersecurity with uh, Edith Cowan University, Australia. So if any of the students who plan to come over to Singapore, then uh, I'll be the program leader here. These are some of my certifications in the cybersecurity domain. Uh, this is EC Council. Uh, this is an American organization who, who are specialized in cybersecurity courses. So at PSB, we offer these certifications, and these certifications have hands-on lab practical exercises, uh, uh, real cyber ranges where students get to learn more about cybersecurity, how to defend network, how to uh, attack a network, everything. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's begin. Uh, just a short video if it plays. Yeah, okay, let's see. This is what we see uh, the common scenes in the movie. Like whenever someone is hacking uh, in all the Hollywood movies, we see these green characters going down and down. Uh, it is not really the case all the time. Okay, so it is not portrayed properly in the movies. Uh, what we what we see is okay. Another one. I think this most of you should be aware. It is from Money Heist on Netflix. 
where there are a group of people who are trying to hack into the bank's server. Now, this is, uh, okay, there's a name of the country. I should, should have taken it out. Okay, anyway, uh, these kind of things happen. Okay, we have, we have uh, many countries uh, who are uh, very much active in the cybersecurity domain. And uh, if you see the next one, this one short one, okay, this is, this is a better understanding of what cybersecurity is. Now, this guy is trying to, uh, he has received a password security uh, file to change his password, and he has not verified where the file is originating from. And he just tries to download the file and change his password. Just with this file, his computer gets uh, infected or get attacked or people can see what he's doing on this computer. This is a very live scenario which can happen, which happens around the world. So uh, recently, if you see, there have been there has been many cyber attacks around the world. The latest one was the Facebook breach where multiple accounts were taken out, uh, email addresses, phone numbers. Why is that? Because uh, what happens is we, we do computer science engineering. We understand uh, how to code. We understand how to uh, develop databases, how to develop front-end systems, but we, we don't really focus on the security aspect of the applications. And uh, that is a problem in a in, uh, few of the programs. So that is why the programs that we have here, we also have one of the modules, which is uh, uh, secure programming, where, you, where we uh, uh, teach more about the threat modeling, how to, how to secure your websites, how to secure your systems, and uh, your network. So what is cybersecurity for all of you? A uh, set of principles and practices designed to safeguard your computing assets and online information against threats. Uh, just to safeguard, if you're trying to protect your virtual networks, your company's network, you are doing something in the security domain. And that is cybersecurity all about. Where there are threats, those threats uh, can become vulnerable. And with those threats and vulnerability, we can attack a system. We can attack uh, applications like Facebook, Twitter. There has been so many hacks everywhere. And uh, pr uh, primarily, it happens due to uh, one of the very famous attacks, which is called social engineering attack, which, uh, which I'll be talking about later. But let's, let's move on from this one. So some of the security threats that we have, intrusion, malware, phishing, spyware, spam, I think spam, all of you should be receiving in your inboxes. So many emails coming in every day. Uh, you don't know where the emails are coming from. They have attachments. Uh, if, you, if you try to download the attachment or they have, they have links, if you try to click on the link, it goes to another, another website. And the website looks genuine, but the, does not look genuine. Something is wrong about the website. Or something is wrong in the spam email itself. There are typos here and there. So these kind of attacks really happen. So these are real things which are happening now. And uh, uh, the different kinds of malware that we have, the, the viruses, the worms, some of the malwares, we don't even have to click anything on the keyboard or we don't have to even click the mouse. It's, it's, it's like the worm. They can self-replicate in the network. Once it is in your network, it starts to replicate. It infects all the computers. And in the cybersecurity domain, we call those computers as zombies really zombies because they are being controlled by someone else so these are some of the the threats that we have uh, spyware one of the one of the most serious ones where uh, whatever you type on your computer uh, is it's been read or seen by someone else uh, you don't even know if your camera is activated on your laptop someone is watching you or not that is also happening and very easy with some of the applications like Android and everything. It's very, very uh, common. Uh, one of the malwares that, we, uh, that, we sh uh, that I would like to talk about is also the ransomware, where, uh, where companies get attacked and uh, their uh, databases get infected and encrypted. And uh, the hacker asks for uh, some ransom amount, uh, some million dollars over there, to uh, decrypt the databases. So these are real threats. These are real threats that are, that are happening in the world. And so there is a challenge in this domain, in, in the cybersecurity domain, where there are not mul uh, many individuals who are cybersecurity trained. And uh, there is a gap. Uh, and this is, this, is not that, this is the gap that we need to bridge, really. Some security measures, always uh, manage your password, always uh, keep your email accounts safe, secure your computers, 
uh, protect the data you are handling, avoid risky behavior online, don't visit any restricted websites, uh, and uh, be sure when you, whenever you are putting in any credit card details on the website, it is a, it is a secure website. It, it has proper certifications. Only then you should put in all your personal details. These are some security measures that we can, we can uh, always keep in mind. Uh, OK, this is a news. Uh, okay, it, is, it is dated, but uh, very relevant today also. The number of compromised data records in selected data breaches as of April 2020. And you see the Apollo, uh, People Data Lab, Yahoo, Aadhaar, which is the Indian, uh, Indian uh, UID. All these gets hacked, and the, the, the information gets leaked. So uh, that is a real concern. And cyber attack could not only have come from China. Now, this was the news. This is Australian uh, prime minister. Because people try to target few countries, like maybe uh, China, maybe India, maybe Pakistan, maybe Bangladesh. That is not the case. Every country has its own group of people who are doing something uh, illegally. Which, is, which, is, which they are not supposed to do. So it's not like we should blame one country. It's, it's better to be more aware and uh, have a safe, like a proper behavior, proper online behavior. Uh, some of the popular online scams, the Nigerian Prince scam. This used to happen a few years back until recently when people got aware and uh, now it's not happening. Uh, where uh, you would receive an email stay saying that you have uh, won, uh, the, uh, this prince uh, has uh, billions of dollars and he wants to siphon it out and uh, he needs your help. So to start the transaction, can you uh, vouch for him and send him some $6,000, $7,000 and then only the transaction will start and you can keep uh, a part of the total billion dollars, some, some part of that money. So it was happening and many people got caught. Many people believed these kind of emails and they went ahead and they paid. They paid the, the amount and they got caught. Another one is uh, this fake shop, fake websites. Now this website looks really like Timberland, but it is not. It's a fake website. Uh, same like Amex. There was a popular breach with Amex. They, they, the hackers, they created uh, a very, very similar looking Amex website, the American Express, where people entered and they punched in their uh, credentials and all details was being captured by the hackers. So some of the some of the scams really, some of the online scams that we should be aware of. And usually it happens because we are not aware of our surroundings. We are not aware of what's happening around us, how are our systems getting attacked and uh, what we should and we should not do when we are online. Uh, another one is uh, social media romance scam where you, where this is mainly targeting the boys. Uh, they receive requests from uh, uh, females on their Facebook, Instagram. They try to uh, accept the friend, uh, friendly, I mean the friend request. And uh, uh, then, then the, the, the girl asks for some money or some help and the, the conning process starts. So some online scams, really, which we should be aware of. Uh, always verify. Always verify any requests that you have. Uh, if you see a, a sense of urgency in the email that, OK, transfer me some amount because I'm in, I'm in dire need or I have some, uh, something coming up very urgently, always verify before you go ahead and do any sort of transaction. So this is what I was talking about, social engineering attacks. Why are they so uh, serious and why is it uh, so easy? Okay, because the way we are humans, we trust each other. And when we hear or when we hear from someone who is related to us asking for some help or asking for uh, some support, we, we trust the individual. That is the human nature that we have. And hackers, they try to use this uh, for their benefit. That is why these attacks happen. The problem is because it cannot be tracked. There is no antivirus software which can stop a social engineering attack. It is only how informed we are. There have been multiple cases. If you go online and check on just YouTube, a uh, real social engineering attack, you will see real social engineering attacks happening and people really transferring money here and there. And uh, why it does not get tracked? 
uh, because the person did not voice out, the person did not verify. Uh, so it becomes our our onus that okay, something wrong with us. It is not uh, the people are just using our thought process, and it is it may be because of laziness, fear. Uh, attitude or ignorance that okay, I cannot be scammed. Uh, that is that is the way I am. I cannot be scammed. So some of the reasons why social engineering attacks are very serious. And uh, if you see those attacks, uh, like the Twitter attack which happened last year, uh, where uh, close to hundred plus uh, accounts were hacked, and uh, that started with a social engineering uh, attack to the one of the employees at Twitter. Who received a, a, a spam email with a link inside, and the person went ahead and clicked that link. So, and uh, I think uh, it was all the celebrities whose accounts were hacked. And uh, uh, the reason was the prime reason was this social engineering, and did not get uh, uh, tracked. Okay, so uh, this is how it happens: attacker performs reconnaissance attack. Uh, user receives an email with a PDF file attachment, supposedly from a hospital supplier, opens the attached file, and once he opens the attached file, the, the malware gets executed on the, on the system, and the attacker has all the data. The attacker has the control of your computer. This is a typical scenario of a social engineering attack. So what are benefits of cybersecurity? Until now, we have seen what happens, what, what is happening around and everything. What, what are the benefits of cyber, cyber security? We can uncover vulnerabilities in our network. If we are cyber trained, we can uh, talk to our, our organization, let them know what can be done to improve the security posture of the organization. Secure applications, uh, okay, yeah, strengthen organizations, security posture, protect organizations and business, and in the end, protect data. What we are working towards is to protect data. We are protecting our network, we are protecting our credentials, we are protecting our files, but in the end, we are just protecting data because data is money now. No one talks money. We, we talk through data. If I have uh, 100,000 customers' records and I talk to a marketing company that, okay, I provide you with 100,000 customer leads, then I have more chances of uh, getting an agreement with a company rather than someone who offers that, okay, I, I will give you $500,000. Okay, it does not work that way. In this current day and age, data is everything, and we need to protect data. Uh, these are the top five skills the employers want in 2021. Uh, there was a survey done by the Australian Computer Society. Uh, the number one is cloud engineers, because with the rising uh, smart devices that we have, smart watches, smart air con, smart TV, the attack surface has increased. Uh, the, the people can attack uh, to your mobile phone, they can attack to your uh, laptop, they can attack to your TV, anywhere. Okay, the attack surface has increased really. They can take your personal information from your smartwatch. Okay, so cloud engineers, very, very uh, uh, popular. The second is cybersecurity professionals. Uh, these two go hand in hand, the number one and number two. Then comes your full stack developer. These are the real applications developer, all those uh, Facebook and all those uh, full stack developing from front end to the back end. Data science, machine learning, quantum computing. These are the five skills, really, really wanted skills. Uh, in if you, if you go and Google, you will find it that these are the five skills really wanted uh, that the employers are looking at. And it also gives you a sense of satisfaction when you try to save your company from an attack, it also gives you the satisfaction that, okay, I did something which was worthwhile. Demand for cybersecurity. Uh, the demand for cybersecurity professionals is outstripping the supply of skilled worker. This is the challenge that we are facing now. Even in Singapore, uh, the demand is very high because all, all the companies are going online. Right now, we are connected online. Someone can save in and uh, they can join this presentation, which happened with Zoom. And uh, the Zoom attack happened because the, the password was not of a appropriate length. So that was, again, the, the secure programming was not done properly. Uh, cybersecurity talent crunch to create 3.5 million unfilled jobs globally by 2021. This is rising. Okay, this is a dated news. This is rising, this 3.5 million. It is, it is even more. 
Uh, why cybersecurity? Some of the reasons here that I have, uh, but I've already spoken everything. So, yeah. Uh, rise of cloud computing, data governance, uh, growing sophistication of cyber crimes. Really sophisticated now. There are automated tools which helps in attacking a network. Uh, it is only our duty or our responsibility and the knowledge that we have that we can use and we can protect the, the networks. Uh, manpower issues. These are real, uh, real feedbacks from HR professionals of Singapore. Uh, slow influx of fresh graduates to meet the growing short-term needs. Uh, startups more at risk of being impacted by talent uh, shortage because all of us want to go to MNCs. No one really wants to go to a startup. So that is also a problem. Fresh cybersecurity graduates are lacking deep practical experience and private companies have to build in-house academies. So this, is, this was one of the reasons why PSB launched the EC Council certifications because EC Council certifications you really have the, the hands-on practical exercises where you get to uh, save your network, attack a network. So with those certifications in hand, you can prove to your employer that, okay, yes, after the certification, I'm qualified enough to protect your network. So why not you hire me? Okay, so that was some reasons why we, why we have uh, incorporated proper certifications, proper professional certifications into our programs here at PSB Academy. Some job roles in cybersecurity. Uh, CISO, this is the, like the highest level. Uh, what we are looking at as students would be here. Penetration tester, malware analyst. Uh, uh, yeah, these two, these two, or risk analyst, okay? Uh, depending on your, on your knowledge, you can also go for threat investigation analyst. These are some of the rules that you're looking at when, when you graduate from a cybersecurity discipline. Uh, why is it uh, very uh, satisfying also is because it's a high earning potential. Cybersecurity graduates, they command their salaries. They don't demand it. They, they, with the knowledge that they have, with the qualifications and the certifications that, we, that they hold, they can really negotiate with the company uh, because they are protecting the companies data and information okay so it's a high earning potential and on top of that because there's a there's a gap in the supply uh, so the demand is is very high it's a challenging career of course very challenging because every day we see new viruses coming into action new ways of attacking a network so very challenging you have to you have to keep up to date all the time highly portable every company needs cyber security because every company some way or the other is using some online source or some online repository which has to be protected so highly portable one com uh, you work for one company for a few year few years you're not happy you can just jump to another com uh, company uh, and it will be equally good uh, and of course service to the public when you when you save as humans we feel satisfied that okay we are doing something which is helping someone we are doing something which is uh, which is saving someone. So yeah, it is it's a service to the public also. Uh, sorry. Uh, these are some salary ranges that you're looking at in Singapore. For a specialist, it's, it's about this amount. For infrastructure, it's about this amount. Application security is about this amount. So these are, uh, okay, at the higher level, but the median is very close. The median is, is very close to, uh, to the salaries here in Singapore. Uh, so that's about it from me. Uh, so uh, that is, I think, 30 minutes. So any questions that you have? Hey, Mark, how are you? I just, I Thank just, you. Uh, hey, I'll just open the questions uh, to the floor. Does anyone have any questions at this point in time? Oh, I love your presentation, Ankit. It speaks to the heart. Because just okay. yesterday, one of my uh, relatives just got a, a scam message on Facebook. Okay. Uh -huh. Imposing as her friend, telling her that she has won a, a, a shop a shopping competition, which she obviously did not take part in. <laughs> very common, very common. That is a very, social very common attack. Very common. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. 
Anyway. <laughs> yeah, one, of the, one of the questions that I do have is that, uh, you know, with um, a lot of uh, work, um, uh, future of work becoming remote with a lot of the digitization that is happening, data security, as you mentioned, Ankit, is one of the top priorities for most organizations right now. So within the courses that you have, is there specialization around that? Because uh, even with one of the webinars that we did with, um, with the, the ex-CISO of the state of Michigan, he... Uh, um, very clearly voiced the the big there, there were two areas actually that he spoke about one was identity theft which is uh, obviously what you've touched upon as well and the other was around data security so uh, would you be able to share some more information around these oh yes of course data security is like i said it is uh, in the end we are trying to protect our data that is what we are trying to do and for for the security of this this database that we have in our organizations at PSB, what we do is we offer many modules around that. Like one of the modules that I mentioned uh, earlier was secure programming. Okay, now with secure programming, and we also have another module which is cryptography. Okay, so with with these two together, you uh, when once you start developing systems, you are you are answering to that data security because now your databases they are not in a plain text. They are encrypted. So even if someone is able to breach in, maybe may able to breach in, he will just see uh, characters like unreadable characters. So it does not make any sense. But we have we have specialized courses. We have specialized certifications here, which will give the students uh, a very broader idea of how to implement secure systems. Yes, we have. Now, uh, one of them is secure programming, cryptography, uh, network security, uh, network security, uh, wireless security. These are the kind of modules you're looking at. Uh, network defender, uh, ethical hacker. We also have a certified ethical hacker here at PSB Academy, where uh, after you you pass those uh, that certification, uh, you can become an ethical hacker. Uh, ethical. I, I'll use that word ethical. Okay, not uh, not a black hat. Just for the the information of everybody in the group, if you're not aware of what an ethical hacker is, every organization actually employs ethical hackers as well. And these are people that deliberately try to penetrate the network of that organization in the back end to make sure it's secure. So just like a hacker would do it from the external environment, these are internal stakeholders, internal employees who try to hack into the system. And uh, their job is to make sure that the system is so secure that an external hacker would not be able to penetrate it. So um, thanks for that, Ankit. That's very useful. Again, for everybody out here who's really interested in understanding cybersecurity, as Ankit mentioned, that uh, it was the number two um, the job skills uh, network brought up by the Australian Education Council. The uh, technology trend survey that Teenspire Global did with 1,500 young people globally, cybersecurity rated as the number two most exciting profession that they want to go after. And uh, guess what the number one was? Artificial intelligence but we all know that artificial intelligence is a trend whereas cyber security is the backbone that never goes and that is where the the opportunity sometimes looks glossy when you look at it from hey this is artificial intelligence this is machine learning but you know tomorrow the trend might change but cyber security as a as a topic and as a, um, a toolkit for the industry only will become more important even with something like electronic vehicles for that matter you know if somebody comes and crashes your car, if they take control over that car, the only person who can help you is the cyber sec engineer who's working on it. So thank you very much, Ankit. Uh, it was a very useful uh, presentation. And I'm sure that there are a lot of uh, students here who might be interested in taking this up. So it's uh, good for you to know what's out there. And the EC Council certification that Ankit has also mentioned is a very powerful um, uh, you know, certification. All the way, uh, especially in Silicon Valley and US, it's a very, very very highly very popular. Yeah, very popular, very popular among CyberSec. So thanks for sharing all of that. What I am doing is just sharing the link of another webinar that we had hosted on cybersecurity with Dan Lohman, who is the ex-CISO of State of Michigan. Anyone that's really interested in understanding this more, please do uh, view that webinar because it provides you a lot of context to what Ankit's just shared with you today. So um, thank you very much, Ankit. And we'll any, be here anyway, if you, if you, if, you, if any one of you have any questions uh this Please is my linkedin so you can always get in touch you can you can you can contact me there no problem 
certainly. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank my you for pleasure. the opportunity. Lovely yeah. having you. Yeah. Bye -bye. And next uh, on board, we have uh, Mr. Mark Wong, who's the Senior right. Specialist of Student Affairs and Industry Engagement at PSB Academy. And Mark is going to touch upon, um, you know, what the, the career advice and what the life in Zikapo is all about. Now, just to give you a context to this um, this whole career fair today and tomorrow is that uh, a lot of students, as I mentioned, are looking at Singapore as a destination of choice for education. And the primary reason for that is that when uh, suddenly countries are locking their borders, you've got to be in an environment that is safe, that's willing, that's accepting. And Singapore is choosing to be that right so when you're looking at your university applications you've got to keep all this in mind now it's no longer about hey which is the great university this is something that could stay with us for two three years so we've got to make sure that we are making an informed choice on this so i'll hand it over to mark to explain to you what the life in singapore is um i don't know if many of you have been to singapore but i've personally been to singapore a few times yeah. and i love singapore so you already have an advocate here mark but i'm going to pass it on to you now Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Can all of you hear me? I'd like to do an A-B test first. Yes, we're, we're good. All we right. Fantastic. You. Fantastic. And what about my screen? Can you see this very colorful slide that says student affairs and industry engagement? Yes, we can. All right. Fantastic. Everything is well and underway. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mark Wong, and I'm actually a senior specialist from the student affairs and industry engagement division of PSB Academy. Now, you may be wondering, what does this division do? Now, early on, I believe that all of you have recalled what uh, Dr. Charles as well as Ankit have uh, shared with you a little bit about careers, right? And incidentally, just a couple of days ago, I happened to speak with a recruiter from the life science sector, as well as the MD of a cybersecurity firm whom I just had lunch with uh, yesterday. In fact, I was just uh, picking their mind uh, on top of uh, what I like to learn from them in terms of hiring opportunities in Singapore, I also took the chance to pick their mind to, to ask them what actually makes a candidate employable? What are they actually looking for when it comes to hire? And they actually told me something that is very important that I, I felt that is my duty to share with all the parents as well as the prospective students here today. And that is, don't just fall back on your studies. Don't just fall back on your grades. Sure, you, all the more you should study hard and get good grades, but also think about other skill sets like public speaking, like negotiation skills, like leadership, like managing people. Right? These are very important skill sets that makes candidates employable. Right? Because in a market like this, which is so competitive, employers want to know that they're hiring the right person who has that X factor. All right? And the question to all of you is, how do you get those additional skills on top of what PSB Academy can offer to you in your academic studies? And this is where student affairs comes into play, all right? All right just to uh, introduce to you some of the members on our team, we have our very lovely uh, bosses, uh, Ms. Perli Wong, as well as uh, Falila Mohammed, And of course, uh, the guy with the biggest head on the, on the slide there is me, Mark. And I work together with uh, my colleague, Eliora. Darren, as well as uh, Freddie, uh, who actually happens to be one of the student leaders uh, whom we've uh, worked with previously. And we felt that, hey, he's a pretty decent guy. He's very outstanding in his community. And hence, uh, we hired him to join our team. Right, we also have Hui Yi, as well as the very, very energetic uh, Gabriel, uh, who is actually a mentor uh, to many of our student uh, clubs in PSB Academy. All right, so under student affairs, we actually have two sub teams right two subdivisions first uh, it's called student life as well as career services and engagement which is uh, the team which i'm serving under right so i'm going to explain to you in a minute what each uh, subdivision does all right so for student life our ultimate goal under this uh, 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 team is to groom students just like you right to take on leadership roles Right, to plan and execute, uh, execute activities so as to build a more vibrant and caring student community. Right, so we have opportunities, in fact, not just opportunities, but many opportunities right, to help you polish up your leadership skills, right, to polish up your subject matter knowledge. For example, maybe some of you are really um, 
interested in technology or like like uh, as Ankit shared with you earlier on hacking, right? So we do have technology student chapters that you possibly could be a part of as well, right? We have interest groups, right? We have student chapters, student clubs that you can potentially uh, consider to be a part of. We also have international student clubs. In fact, we have six of them. So those of you who feel a little bit at home, um, you know, with someone who is from your country, there's probably a student club for you. All right. So the purpose is to give you additional experiences, right, to hone your skill sets, right, so that later on when you're about to graduate, you're all ready for the industry, right? So imagine, right, if an employer were to ask you, right, so besides what you have done in school, right, besides your studies, what else do you think you can offer to the role? Have you managed the team? Have you been part of a leadership council? Have you organized an event before? So these are some questions that interviewers are likely to ask you, all right? We also, uh, we also have a student care and guidance uh, uh, function as part of student life. And this is where we work very closely with our in-house counselor to provide holistic support for students facing personal issues as well as challenges, right? And to help them to make it through student life uh, in a very positive way at PSB Academy. All right, so I'm pretty sure for many of us who have been overseas to studies uh, all alone, all right, sometimes we may feel a little bit overwhelmed. We may even have a little bit of a culture shock, right, and feeling a little bit uh, stressed out because of that, right? Or maybe some of us uh, need just a little uh, listening ear or an additional help to manage uh, your, your some learning needs that you may have, right? We have a counselor right, who is always there for you Right, being there for you to listen to your issues and also to help you um, make your experience here a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> All right, and we have various uh, integration activities where students are able to learn how to network with one another, to break the ice, right, and also to you know just to get to know their peers. It could be someone from another country as well, and to just integrate well within our community in Singapore. All right, so these are two functions, student life and student care. These are what we can do for you. All right, and uh, just to share some good news, uh, last year, I think it was in December, all right, a PSB Academy uh, was privileged to have won an award uh, from the Silver Ribbon Singapore, all right? So Silver Ribbon Singapore is actually a not-for-profit organization that promotes mental health in Singapore. And because of, of our various initiatives, and activities to promote a more, uh, men, uh, a more friendly environment, a more um, encouraging environment here in PSB Academy. So we were recognized for that effort, right? To promote mental health to students. And uh, that's why we actually won the award uh, last year. And that's something that we're very proud of. And this is something that uh, we can assure all of you parents out there uh, listening with us today that we will take care of your kids, take care of your children, make sure that they integrate well with our community, right? All right. So here's a little bit about career services and engagement. Earlier on, Ankit and Dr. Charles mentioned a lot about careers, right? So the question is, how do you get skills to get employed, okay? So this is where career services comes in to work hand in hand with you, to prepare you for career readiness, right? And to help you get opportunities to connect with employers, for potential recruitment uh, uh, opportunities, right? So we believe uh, a lot on uh, developing relationships with a network of industry partners, from life science to technology to cybersecurity. In fact, I met uh, with the MD uh, of a, a local firm yesterday, right? To business, finance, you name it, right? And it is all leading towards the goal of building long-term relationships, right? So that these industry partners are able to give you, or rather give you students, a glimpse into their organizations in future, right? And to potentially hire you, hopefully, right? So we conduct a, a very regular, on a very regular basis, career coachings, career fairs, recruitment talks. We have also run industry visits where students uh, get a glimpse of uh, what the real working environment is like, to sort of get a teaser and to decide whether, hey, is this the organization that I hope to work for later on after graduation? All right. We also have invited uh, company. Thank you so much. <laughs> Shalom alaikum. 
<laughs> All right. We also have uh, organized uh, various uh, companies. Okay, I think someone's very excited here. <laughs> Although I don't understand a single word, <laughs> but I'll just go on. All right. So we have uh, organized company pop-ups, right, where students are able to explore uh, recruitment opportunities with some of our industry partners. And very importantly, we organize career workshops to help you get the skills to craft a better resume, to craft a, better, uh, a, a winning cover letter, to articulate yourself more confidently at an interview, to groom yourself professionally. All right, so these are very important skills that will go into what makes you employable on top of the grades that you got in school, all right? So we always say that once a family always stays a family, right? When, which is why we also have an alumni engagement uh, function where we continually engage our graduates to be part of our community. So there is never a time where we let you go. We, we are always welcoming you back to give back to our community, either to network with your peers, your fellow graduates, right? To exchange contacts for some opportunities, or maybe just to celebrate your achievements together with us. Right, and just to name a few um, networking activities, we have run um, uh, coffee appreciation uh, events, uh, movie sessions in our campus. Just to share a fun fact, our city campus uh, used to be an a entertainment area. All right, our lecture theaters are actually um, reformatted um, movie theaters. It used to be a cinema. Right, so we, we actually organized movie sessions in our lecture theaters as well. We also have reunions, right, where um, various alumni come back and just to say hi to one another. All right, so that's what the alumni does. All right, so this is an example of a career workshop which we have done uh, on in, in March, all right, uh, last year, if I'm not wrong, it was last year. And this was actually to covering resume mastery for life science students, okay? And this is a collaboration between career services as well as the School of Life and Physical Sciences. Okay, um, just a quick check. I can't really see what's going on on my screen, so I'm hearing a lot of buzzing on my phone. Uh, am I still online with you, or did I get cut off? No, you, you're with us, Mark. Okay, fantastic, because I can't see your feedback here, and I'm getting a lot of buzzing on my phone. <laughs> I hope it's not some uh, warning or anything. Okay, so let me just go on. Uh, but before that, is everyone good? Am I going too fast? Would you like me to slow down? So I think, uh, just need your help to let me know if uh, there's any feedback from the ground. It's all good, man. It's all good? Okay, fantastic. I'll go on. All right, so on the screen here are also um, other career skills coachings, webinars that we have run for our La Trobe University Life Sciences students. All right, as you can see on the left side, uh, we have run a workshop that says lots of applications, zero replies. Here's why. All right, and that's a very common challenge for students who are about to graduate, all right? Sometimes if, when you're, if you're lucky, you would get a reply from an employer. But most of the time, sometimes uh, you might not uh, have the, um, you might not know the right approach, right? To, to, to find a job and as such, you know, you do certain things and it might not be the right thing to do. So we, we come here and to actually educate you, what are some of the best practices that you should implement in order to stand out to an employer and to get a response. So we've conducted uh, sessions on uh, how do you make employers remember you, right? And what are some of the costly mistakes that graduates should not be making in an interview, right? And of course, we also have a workshop that helps you understand more about your personality, right? And we as career coaches can help you match your personality to the right job, right? So these are some a teaser of uh, the, the type of trainings that we um, train uh, among our students. So it's very important, right? And not just that, right? We always believe that coming to our session to learn something is one thing, right? But to walk away with something valuable is another. So every time at the end of a, a training, we make sure that you walk away with a bonus, right? So for this uh, example here, um, we actually gave away a set of uh, plug and play templates, right? To help uh, our students craft their first cover letters and resumes, right? So even though, you know, sometimes as coaches, when we teach something, people don't really remember that much, right? So we understand that. And that's why we give, uh, we give students 
uh, who attended our resume writing workshops, uh, some of these free bonuses, right, to just help them get started uh, writing a cover letter and a resume, all right? And these are even more trainings that we have run uh, for our mainstream audience. So this is not just for life science, but we also open up our trainings for business, uh, IT, engineering uh, students as well and other disciplines and if you can if you if you notice from the posters that you see on the screen they are very relevant the topics are very relevant to what's happening right now right so all, across the years when we run our trainings we make sure that the content is never static it changes along with the needs of the times so take for example um the poster the third poster on the right side it talks about strategies for job search success in a pandemic. In fact, this is uh, happening on uh, 28 April, all right? And uh, we have invited uh, one of our cybersecurity graduates by the name of Max, right, to share with us how in the world did he secure, right, a well-paying job, all right, as a foreigner in Singapore, all right? And he's our cybersecurity fresh graduate. Um, and uh, I, I thought he's, uh, he's an amazing person. He's really energetic, right? I just, you know, I just had to invite him to share his success secrets uh, with our audience. We've also invited a local uh, local graduate to come and share, and this is very important, right? To come and share how mental resilience helped her overcome a retrenchment, right? To secure a dream job. All right. So these are very uh, so these are very uh, current topics that we um, you know that we uh, inculcate in our students. Right, of course, we have run a session on how do you how do you become a talent magnet to recruiters? Uh, it, how do you plan careers for the new normal? All right, because career planning last year, no, two years ago, and career planning now is just totally different already. So, what are some of the strategies that students need to know? We were there to to share those strategies with them. All right, industry visits. All right, life science students. All right, we have actually brought uh, some life science students to Quest Laboratories. And Quest Laboratories is actually the largest uh, independent laboratory in Singapore, right? So as you can see there, our life science students uh, had a ball of a time uh, on that day, right? We've also collaborated with uh, this uh, JTC Corporation, uh, which is actually a government agency in Singapore uh, that champions sustainable industrial uh, development. So, so JT Corporation uh, is a sprawling um, uh, industrial estate, right? That houses various uh, pharmaceutical giants, for example, Novartis, right? They, had a, they have a biopharma manufacturing plant, right? In one of the uh, ma uh, medical parks there, right? And we actually worked with Novartis and JTC uh, to run a virtual plant tour uh, exclusively for life science students, right? So it's, it's, it's not very often you get a glimpse into a, into a, a pharma manufacturing plant, but on that day, our students got that rare uh, insight into what it really uh, what is uh, what is really like uh, inside a plant. Right. All right, so this is actually for the tech students uh, out there, right? We have one various um, tech centric, right? Technology centric uh, industry talks as well as uh, visits for our uh, technology students. Of course, SAP is a very um, famous brand that I'm sure many of us have heard of. Uh, last year, we have actually run a industry uh, uh, conversation with them. What, is, what are some of the skills that tech students need to have in order to compete and to thrive in the tech industry? All right, we've even um, hosted students to a very special um, industry visit to Indonesia uh, at one point in 2018, where our students uh, got a rare insight into some of uh, the country's hottest uh, startups as well as digital companies, right? We've managed to visit some of the unicorns uh, in, in Indonesia uh, that year. We've also brought our students to uh, Launchpad, which is uh, touted as the Silicon Valley of Singapore. And uh, this, thanks to our industry partners uh, uh, at Launchpad, we, we managed to make this very uh, exclusive industry visit successful. Uh, and this is uh, especially for our students, right? So these are just very, a few samples of what you've done, right? That's just way too many industry visits. Uh, for me to share with you, but these are some of the, the key ones that I like to share. And we've also been to Google, and yes, our students actually got a taste, okay, of their gourmet, their famous uh, gourmet food at their uh, at their canteen, right? So, 
uh, we had a very uh, fun outing that time. We've also visited Facebook, as you can see on the right side of the screen. And this is something new that we launched this year, right? We're talking a lot about job opportunities, I remember. And uh, we felt that, hey, you know, why not let's take a step further? Why not curate job openings and deliver it to you, right, when you're about to graduate? All right, so this is something that we have rolled out uh, two months ago, and we call it uh, a jobs menu. So if you're graduating within a certain period this year, it is likely that you'll receive this jobs menu, which is uh, a curated listing of various job opportunities uh, made available through our industry partners. As you can see on the right side, uh, is a, we have some opportunities in the life science sector. All right, so this, this was actually uh, sent yesterday. So it's fresh off the oven, and I thought I should share this with you. All right, we also have uh, bi-weekly career newsletters uh, with the goal of promoting learning as well as hiring opportunities. So our students actually receive these type of newsletters with listings of jobs every two weeks without fail. All right, so this is something uh, that's value added that we thought would help our graduating students. We've also organized career fairs. And uh, the thing about career services is we've all, we always love to make things fun for our students, right? It's not just a simple career fair, as you can see. So this was uh, held uh, in our STEM campus. Uh, and we've actually brought in a little uh, BB-8 Star Wars robot, right, to, to, to mingle with our students. It actually moves its head and uh, it was very fun. And this is actually a STEM career fair. So the jobs made available through this fair are, are technology focused, right? There's engineering jobs, IT, as well as uh, life and physical sciences, right? Just for your information, right? We've also have a, uh, we also have another career fair, which is held in our city campus, which is in a city, right? And this has actually more um, students attending because it's, it's a larger campus over there. And uh, we had various, uh, I think we had up to about 30 to 30 or 40, I think, uh, employers giving jobs across the business sector, right, and finance as well to uh, all the participants. All right, and this is something very interesting uh, for all the parents out there. This is something noteworthy that I think uh, you should take note of. I would say that PSB Academy, I couldn't, I can't verify this, but we are probably the first private education institution to offer this identity three personality profiling tool for free, right, for our students as well as graduates. So what this thing does is we invite students to take a test, all right, and usually it will cost a couple, couple of hundred dollars out there in the market if you're going to do it on your own, but this is absolutely free, right? And this test has an intelligence system to map out your strengths as well as your uh, shortcomings as well, right? And it allows career coaches just like myself and my colleagues on the team to give another level to our career advisory to students, right? For example, maybe some, maybe some of the students um, have an inkling that they're good at a certain skill set, right? Maybe sales or maybe, uh, or maybe computer programming, but they're not sure, right? So this personality profiling test allows us to affirm that they're good in a certain area, all right? And this allows us to give them uh, the right advice to match their personality type to the right career function. How good is that, right? So this is exclusive only for PSB Academy students as well as our graduates, right? We also have a career services handbook where um, new students, new enrollees are able to download for free and they'll be able to get um, various strategies and tips, right? On uh, what they can do on day one, <laughs> right? Uh, as we always uh, encourage uh, in PSB Academy, don't just wait till you graduate until you learn the skills to get a job, right? There are certain things that you can do progressively starting from day one to get the right experience so that by the time you graduate, you're all ready, right? So this career services handbook will help you do just that, right? We also have a career portal where, stu uh, where graduating students are able to um, view as well as apply for jobs at the touch of a button on their smartphones, right? And of course, for students uh, who are about to graduate and are feeling very nervous, very anxious about 
not knowing what to do after graduation? Is it time for a career switch? What's the real working world like? These are some of the common concerns that we have seen in our students, and which is why uh, we have come up with a mentoring program where we're able to match students who have these concerns to an industry partner, right? To get the right uh, guidance uh, to help them or rather to help the students make the transition from fresh graduate to the working world. All right, so this is something special that we uh, uh, organize uh, for our students. We have other services as well, such as a buddy program uh, to, where we match a senior uh, to a new student uh, to help them uh, um, overcome the anxiety of being alone in campus. Uh, we also have hostel partners, right? If you're looking for accommodation, uh, we have some very competitive rates as well uh, available to our hostel partners. We've got outpatient insurance to make sure that uh, your, your children are well taken care of. Uh, we also have a locker rental service uh, on campus. So this is just uh, for your information. Uh, we have, uh, if I'm not wrong, we have two hostel partners uh, whom we work with and we have very, uh, very uh, affordable as well as comfortable um, um, hostel options for students who are looking to stay here. All right, so these are just uh, some of the rates uh, just for your knowledge. I, I won't go into detail. And they're all within um, short distance uh, 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 from our subway system. All right, so we always encourage uh, students, uh, parents as well, if you'd like to uh, get updates on what PSB Academy does for our students on a regular basis, you can actually get in touch with us on Facebook. Just uh, you can give us a like or you can uh, check us out on Instagram. Uh, I don't think WeChat applies to you, but that's actually for our China audience. Uh, and we always encourage students to also check our emails. But yeah, so feel free to stay connected with us, right? And we've got even more content, <laughs> okay, all over the place. All right, so on YouTube, uh, if you were to type in PSB Academy Student Affairs and Industry Engagement, you are very likely to find one of our videos, right, to give you a snippet of what student life is really like here, as well as some tips to help you get prepared for your career. All right, so take note, you can take a picture if you want, right, take note of this title and the link below the screen. Go check us out on YouTube when you have the time, all right? I think you'll love what we've done. And we also have uh, digital resources for our students who are looking to view recorded sessions of our trainings. This is available to them as well. All right, and these are some of the various uh, uh, contact uh, points, right? If you're looking for a certain, uh, a very specific service, right? So this is what students have access to. All right, and that uh, is my end of the presentation. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> and uh, it was a pleasure to meet all of you online. Thank you, Mark. That was very useful. Does anyone have any specific questions for Mark at this point? Okay, now I can see the chat box. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? So we have one question here. How exactly do work yes. opportunities for non-Singaporean citizens mm. Like currently, yep. I've heard of university scholarships. If you yep. agree to stay on and work in Singapore, yep. for example, but how mm. do you apply to the international students? Fantastic. I'm glad that uh, Vishnu Maya, I'm glad you asked that question. Recalling earlier on, I mentioned uh, one of the events that I'm running on 20 April. All right. I'm not sure whether we can have you uh, on that uh, webinar as our guest, but uh, I've actually invited Max, right, who is an international graduate. Uh, from our cybersecurity course, right? And uh, he managed to secure a successful employment, right? With a local uh, cybersecurity firm. And uh, I mean, just to share uh, some spoilers, okay, in case, uh, in case you're not available on the day. So what Max told me was that, first and foremost, employers are always looking for that little X factor. Remember earlier on I shared with you, right? And the thing about Max is not only was he very good in school, He's academically fan outstanding, it's fantastic, right? He's shown me his grades. He's also very skilled in penetration testing. Remember early on, Ankit was sharing about um, some of the fresh grad uh, roles available in cybersecurity as a penetration tester. So he, he has the skill sets already because he, from what he told me, he's actually a geek, right? Who does uh, his own research out of classroom, right? So he literally eats, sleeps and breathes cybersecurity. Look, so skill sets, right? First and foremost, doesn't matter whether you're local or a non-Singaporean. So, so long as you have the right skill sets, 
half the battle is won already. The other, the other half of what I think made him successful in securing a job is every time when I speak to Max, right, it feels different. You can literally see the sparkle in his eyes and the fire in his voice when he talks about the subject matter. So imagine, right, if his person, such an energetic personality, shines through in an interview combined with his experience, right, of, on, of the subject matter, do you think that it's hard for the employer to say no to him? <laughs> okay. So what I'm trying to say is, no matter the situation out there, no matter the situation is happening right now, I know we've, we've heard various uh, sources say, hey, pandemic, right? Uh, are the markets even opening up, right? Is it harder to get a job now? There, there would be challenges inevitably, right? But the key thing is, is about yourself. How willing and how hard are you willing to work on yourself so that you get the right skills to succeed and to have the right personality that allows you to stand out in an interview, right? So that is what I hope um, you can think about, um, you know, and, and I, I hope this answers your question. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Anyone else you, um, want to ask another question? Feel free to use the chat window or just unmute yourselves to ask. All right. Thank right. you, Mark. Thank you. Now we have a Q&A session with uh, Vaishnavi uh, from uh, PSB Academy as well. Right. So welcome, uh, Vaishnavi, to the floor. Um, at this point in time, this is an open open uh, session, and you are welcome to just uh, take your microphones off so that we can all, uh, uh, you know, um, as a group, discuss what some of the uh, issues in your mind could be, or if there's anything else that you want to get addressed. So welcome, Vaishnavi. And, uh, Vaishnavi Vaishnavi uh, Nagapandian is also part of the PSB Academy. She is uh, looking after, um, you know, all of the... Hi! She's looking after all of um, the... Uh different uh, modules around uh, the international student recruitment itself. So if you have any specific questions on how you get to Singapore and what Singapore life is all about, then Vaishnavi is the right person to talk to you about it. So does anyone have any questions at this point in time for Vaishnavi? Now, one of the ones that I had, uh, Vaishnavi, were that uh, once somebody does, uh, you know, take up a course in um, any of the courses that you have with PSC Academy, then how does uh, their, um, you know, um, visa run? Do you normally have an extension of maybe a couple of years after you've completed your course to be able mm -hmm. to look for a job and therefore continue your stay in Singapore? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, so that's that's really a great question. I think that's one of the most um, uh, like you no know, frequently asked questions uh, in case of like Singapore because the regulatory environment in Singapore is like much different compared to like um, you know most of the other countries. So basically, for Singapore, when you are applying for a certain program of visa, so you get the visa for the validity of the program. So for example, if the program has been registered say for like three years, so probably you would be able to get a visa for three years. So I guess. Uh, Mark, Ankit, and uh, Dr. Charles has been sharing a lot about the programs and also the career opportunities, right? So essentially, the students don't start looking for career opportunities after the program. So they start uh, they start preparing for it while they are in the program itself. So the, whatever the activities that the students are doing that starts that runs uh, in parallel according, like you know, along with the academic programs. Because once the student is has graduated from the program in Singapore, as per the the regulatory uh, requirements, then the visa will have to be cancelled. So maximum the stay back period could range anywhere between say like uh, one month to three months. Uh, the student can extend the visa, uh, like but they will be on a tourist visa once the student visa has been cancelled. So they, the extension is uh, like subjective to the approval from immigration. So usually students get to say get to stay in Singapore maybe for a period of like three to six months, depending upon the extension that they receive from the immigration. Yeah, but if uh, career opportunity is a major, you know, like um, something that we are looking forward, especially for the international students, all of our students are pretty proactive. So they start looking at it uh, while they are studying. So it's much more convenient to transfer to the, you know, the employment pass once they have been graduating. Yeah. Thank you, Vaishnavi. Thanks for clarifying that. Does anyone have any other questions at this point? 
You can use the chat window or you can just unmute yourselves. So one other question that I had, Vaishnavi, was that how long does it normally take for the entire enrollment process to take place and for somebody to get to Singapore once they've decided what program they want to go for? Okay, great. So let me let me break this question into two parts, pre-COVID and post-COVID right now, because the the processes have changed uh, uh, slightly a little bit, uh, you know, once the COVID has um, started, although the students have already started coming into Singapore, but there is a slight uh, change in the process. Okay, so pre-COVID, um, anyway, usually we recommend the student to apply at least one month before the course commencement. So the application, uh, along with the visa process, it takes a period of, say, like three to four weeks once you know the once the student uh, has confirmed that you know he has to take a particular program and we have done uh, we have confirmed the eligibility and uh, we have uh, provided a confirmation the student is eligible to apply so it normally takes three to four weeks for the student to like get in the visa and come into singapore but uh, i guess uh, after covid has uh, started i'm sure you know uh, there is a lot of restrictions in place especially in terms of travelers uh, while they're coming into singapore because uh, singapore government has been um, has been like uh, you know, active in, in and making sure there is a limited number of visitors at one point of time, right? So students have started coming into Singapore since last year, September. Campus is open and they are attending classes. However, uh, there is an additional layer where it's required for the students, like once a student visa is approved, uh, they need to get an entry approval for them to travel into Singapore. So now uh, the, the system is pretty straightforward is that uh, they once a visa is approved, uh, then they can just go log in and some of their details to get an instant entry approval. Uh, but the travel dates are, uh, because it's by slots, right? So usually the travel dates it's available based on the, like it's, it's based on the nearest availability. So we recommend students to apply at least um, two to three, two and a half to three months before the course commencement. So they come into Singapore, uh, at this point, uh, you know, majority of the countries have two weeks of quarantine, except like very few countries like China and a few others. Uh, so they are in time to start the classes on campus. So a minimum period of two and a half months to three months is required at this moment until, you know, the COVID is, in every, is normalized everywhere across different parts of the world. So that, that would be an ideal timeline for the student who are choosing to apply for the program. Yeah. Great. And when is the next um, intake, Vaishnavi, at your end? Vaishnavi, we can't hear you. Uh, I have. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, awesome. Great. So the next intake, so usually for most of the countries, uh, the peak intake period is, to, is through the July to September, because many of the students will be finishing school between May and June. So our intake for the undergraduate as well as the diploma programs uh, is between uh, July to September period. So where the students can uh, apply. And uh, we also have uh, intakes in October and November. So the students, uh, students can actually choose to apply for the programs between July to November period, depending on which program that they are coming into. So it's open for both undergraduate and uh, postgraduate programs. Uh, and I think as you have also mentioned, so we work with different universities at this point of time. So we work with the University of Newcastle, Australia, Coventry University, UK, Massey University, New Zealand. So we work at least with eight different university partners uh, from Australia, UK, and New Zealand. So each of the universities have um, different intake periods. So depending upon the program that the student is applying, so we usually have intakes throughout the year from Jan to November for different universities. Thank you very much. I think that clarifies a lot of, um, you know, what what these um, students would be looking for and the kind of knowledge that they need before they embark on the journey to decide what they want to do. Does anyone have any other questions at this point in time? Great. In which case, we look forward to welcoming you to the next um, career uh, fair day, which is tomorrow, where we will be discussing more about the engineering courses and also the business uh, um, studies and business analytics courses. And those are also uh, becoming hot ticket items uh, for the future of work and, and what that brings to us. So we look forward to welcoming you for that um, and uh, hope you had a wonderful session today. If you have any questions, feel free to drop an email and we'd be more than happy to address these tomorrow for you. But thanks for joining and we'll see you tomorrow.
Thank Thanks, you. Pleasure. Thank you, you Aisha. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mark, Falila. It's a pleasure to have you guys and have you support the team. Thanks. Likewise. Bye thank for you, now. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.